Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. A dental surveyor is an instrument used to determine the relative parallelism of the teeth and other parts of a cast of a dental arch. It is an extremely useful instrument in the practice of dentistry. It is indispensable in the planning, design, and fabrication of removable partial dentures. Because a dental surveyor is such an important instrument in dentistry, every dentist should know the parts of the surveyor and how to use it. The base of the surveyor is a flat machined platform. We have the vertical upright, which joins the base to the cross arm. The cross arm holds the spindle, the vertical spindle, which can move freely up and down, but can be locked with a spindle locking nut, or it can be loosened slightly to allow this to move with a little bit of friction. At the end of the spindle, we have the, the tool holder. Any one of the various tools used in the surveyor can be attached just like that and will hold the tool firmly. We also have the cast holder. The cast holder is composed of two parts. The top part is the model holder. And a model can be locked on here so it is firmly locked in position. The cast holder also has a universal ball joint, and this cast can assume any one of an inf infinite number of positions, and once the position has been as assumed, can be locked by this locking nut. Another part of the surveyor is the rack down at the base of the vertical upright, a series of holes where you can store some of the tools. At the top of the vertical upright is a storage compartment where the tools can be stored when they're not in use. There are certain tools which must be used with the surveyor. The first of these is the analyzing rod. The analyzing rod which comes with the Ney surveyor is a thin black rod. However, this rod bends very, very easily. Therefore, it is much better to take an old straight handpiece burr place a bevel on the end of it and utilize it as an analyzing rod. The next tool is the carbon marker in its shield. The carbon markers that come with the surveyor are pieces of lead. It would be much better if you place a bevel on the lead as you see here, which makes it more convenient and easier to use in the surveyor. The next tool utilized in the surveyor is the blockout tool. The Ney blockout tool is a spear-like knife. However, this, because it is a knife, has a tendency to score or scrape casts. It is much better to use, again, the straight hand piece analyzing rod as the blockout tool. The last set of tools utilized in the surveyor are the undercut gauges. They come in three sizes. 10 thousandths of an inch, 20 thousandths of an inch, and 30 thousandths of an inch. These will gauge the exact amount of undercut available on an abutment tooth. Now that we know the parts of the dental surveyor, we would like, we'd like to discuss some of the many uses of the surveyor in removable partial denture prosthodontics. The first and most important use is the determination or selection of the path of insertion and removal of the prospective prosthesis. And to do this, we have the cast on the cast holder locked at a horizontal or level tilt. We have an analyzing rod locked in the tool holder on the surveyor. And what we're going to do is determine or examine retention on the possible abutment teeth. Look at one side and reverse and go around to the opposite side to the prospective abutment tooth. And we notice that there is a, a Great amount of retention on one side, but minimal on the opposite side. We also check possible guide plane areas. We look at the abutment tooth on one side and go over to the other side. 
At the same time, we look for possible undesirable undercuts. And if necessary, for any aesthetic quality that might be determined in this case. What we do is actually unlock the ball joint and we can move the cast from side to side, back and forth, any one of the many positions available, constantly checking the undercut available. So we try to get balanced retention on both sides of the arch. We also check the guide plane areas to see where we can produce guide planes. And we check these undesirable undercut areas to try to eliminate or minimize all of the undesirable undercuts. And we do this until we finally come up with a compromise position between these four factors, retention, guide planes, undesirable undercuts, and aesthetics. And this becomes our path of insertion and removal. Once we have the path of insertion and removal determined, selected, another use of the surveyor would be to draw the survey line on the abutment teeth. And for this, we have the carbon rod protected by the shield in the tool holder of the surveyor. And with the cast locked on the cast holder, holding the carbon rod against the stone tooth, we rotate the cast around the carbon rod and draw the survey line or height of contour line around that abutment tooth as well as any other abutment tooth involved in the cast. Another use of the surveyor is to locate and plan for parallel guide planes on abutment teeth. And a, a guide plane is an area on an abutment tooth which will stabilize the retentive clasp as well as stabilize the partial denture in place and guide the partial denture into place in the mouth. As you can see here, on this bowler, we have a bell shape. There's a light under here. But we want to locate or plan in the mouth preparation of this cast or this patient is a parallel guide plane in this area. So the surveyor would locate the area and determine just how much we have to parallel this tooth in either the restoration or the tooth itself. Another use of the surveyor is the determination and location of retentive undercut on the potential abutment teeth for the prospective prosthesis. In this instance, we have placed the 20 thousandths of an inch undercut gauge in the tool holder of the surveyor. And if we lower it and then place it so the shaft of the undercut gauge touches the abutment tooth at the survey line or height of contour line and slowly raise the undercut gauge until both the shaft and the flange touch the tooth at the same time, we have accurately located 20 thousandths of an inch undercut on that abutment tooth. We would do the same thing on all abutment teeth on this stone cast. If that amount of undercut is not available on a, a potential abutment tooth, we would either have to recontour the tooth or place a gold crown on the tooth to locate or determine that amount of retentive undercut. The next use of the surveyor would be the location and delineation of undesirable tissue undercuts. And for this, we have the carbon marker protected by the shield in the surveyor and the cast locked on the cast holder. And we place the survey carbon marker against the cast and we can actually draw this line and what this shows is an undesirable tissue undercut in that area, the area where we will probably put part of the major connector. We can see that we have determined the path of insertion and removal of the prospective prosthesis on this cast by utilizing many of the uses of the surveyor. Among them, the location of retentive undercut on abutment teeth, the location and determination of potential guide planes, and the location and delineation of undesirable tissue undercuts. All of these together go to forming the potential path of insertion and removal of the prosthesis.
The survey may also be used to determine where and how to recontour natural teeth. This bicuspid has a high survey line on the lingual. It requires a parallel guide plane. And the determination is made to utilize this tooth without a restoration. So with the surveyor, we can determine where and how to produce a parallel guide plane on the lingual of this tooth. And once it is prepared, come back to the surveyor with another cast and check to be sure that we have paralleled or recontoured this tooth exactly as desired. The surveyor is also used to diagnose and plan for restorative procedures on abutment teeth or other teeth. In this instance, on this particular abutment tooth, you can see with the surveyor and the undercut gauge against this molar and the 20 thousandths of an inch gauge that the shaft does not touch the tooth at the same time as the flange. Therefore, we do not have 20 thousandths of an inch of undercut. In this instance, we will be required to construct a gold crown on this abutment tooth and recontour it during the wax up and finishing stage to provide enough retention there. At the same time that we provide retention on this tooth, on the, on the lingual, we will provide a parallel lingual guide plane. Tripoding is a method of marking the diagnostic cast while it is on the surveyor cast holder at the chosen tilt or path of insertion and removal so that this cast or any new casts made from subsequent impressions of the arch can be repositioned on the cast holder at the same tilt. We look for three widely spaced spots on areas of the cast which, we, which will be reproduced in any impression you make of the arch. Try to locate these spots on rugi, on teeth, or on folds of tissue for ease of location on the new cast. Do not use the base itself, the tongue space, or the buckle space, for these will not be duplicated in any new cast that you make. In the tripod, we will place the carbon marker at the area we have chosen. We lock the vertical spindle in that position so that we can mark these three spots or areas. We do one on the anterior, one on this heel, and one on this side. Now we have three lines or carbon marks that have actually created a horizontal plane which conforms to the tilt of the cast. Now with another pencil, we actually make a cross out of these three lines and these become our tripod marks. This cross will prevent us from confusing these tripod markings with any other survey lines or marks. Another type of orientation markings which can be used is grooving of the posterior and lateral sides of the cast. And this is done by utilizing the analyzing rod against posterior of the cast and using a sharp instrument of some sort, drawing or scoring the cast along the analyzing rod. And it provides a sharp indentation in the cast. We move that over to the lateral side and do the same thing. We have actually provided grooves on two sides of this cast which can be utilized to relocate this cast or an exact duplicate of this cast and base in this same position. Usually after we have these lines cut we mark them with a pencil so they are distinct and can be seen. Now this cast can be relocated on the surveyor cast holder in the same relative position by utilizing these two lines. It is important to realize that you can only utilize these grooves to relocate the same cast. It cannot be used for a subsequent cast made from a subsequent impression. Another important use of the surveyor is in the waxing up of gold crowns for partial dentures. The surveyor can be utilized during the wax up of the crown to contour the buckle of crowns for retentive undercut and of more importance the lingual
to provide parallel lingual guide planes. Another use of the surveyor is to verify and machine gold crowns after they have been cast. We verify the parallel lingual guide plane surface with the analyzing rod and then by using a handpiece holder and a parallel stone, we actually can machine that parallel surface to be sure it is parallel to the path of insertion and removal as determined before. The handpiece holder attached to the surveyor holds that stone and the handpiece parallel to the analyzing rod. During the fabrication of removable partial dentures, all undesirable undercuts must be eliminated or removed to prevent the metal framework from being introduced into these undercuts. After the master cast has been surveyed and the design drawn on it, a suitable block out wax is applied to all of the undesirable undercuts on the teeth and the tissue areas. Then, with a block out tool or analyzing rod mounted on the surveyor spindle, the excess wax is removed and paralleled to the path of insertion and removal. We have discussed the parts of the dental surveyor and demonstrated some of its uses in removable partial denture prosthodontics. In addition, the surveyor has many other uses in complete denture prosthodontics, crown and bridge prosthodontics, and general restorative dentistry. These procedures will be demonstrated as they occur later on. In our opinion, the dental surveyor is one of the most important instruments in the dental office armamentarium. As such, every dentist should own a surveyor and should know how to use one with a fair degree of competence. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.